Hello, everyone. Once again, thank you so much for your time. Today, I'd like to embark on a new topic, which is called filter design. Our topic for today's discussion is to discuss the terminology and also the parameters that is used to describe filter design. This will be the part one series. So stay tuned with this channel to receive more information on the rest of the filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe buttons. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more info from this channel. Thank you so much. Okay, let's start the discussion by mentioning what are the different types of filter. In fact, over here, you can see that there are actually four types of filter. Number one, which is called low pass filter. Number two, high pass filter. Number three, band pass filter. And last but not least, band stop or band reject filter. Okay, so these are the four types of filter that we're going to do a deep study. Firstly, let's understand why this is called low pass filter. Okay, from this diagram here, you can see that all the low frequency component will be able to pass while the high frequency fall under the stop band, okay, which means that they are not allowed to pass. Hence, because of the characteristic all the low frequency actually pass and all the high frequency stop. Hence, therefore, this filter is called a low pass filter because uh, as mentioned, all the low frequency will be able to pass. Next, the same philosophy can actually apply to high pass filter. From this diagram here, you can see that all the low frequency, they fall under the stop band, okay, which means that they are not allowed to pass. But for all the high frequency component, they fall under the pass band, which means that they are all able to pass. Hence, therefore, this filter response is called a high pass filter. Next, okay, I'm going to describe to you what is a band pass filter. For band pass filter, okay, we have two cutoff frequency. Okay, one, we call it a lower cutoff frequency. Number two, this is the upper cutoff frequency and right in the middle is called the center frequency, which I'm going to illustrate later on. So from this filter response, you can see that the band within here is actually called a pass band, which means that you actually specify a certain band for them to pass and the rest will be fall under the stop band. Hence, this is called a band pass filter. Last but not least, on band stop or band reject filter. From this diagram here, okay, you can see that this band here is actually rejected or stop band here. Sometimes we also use this as a notch filter, okay, which means that this particular band, they don't allow it to pass. While the rest, okay, they actually fall under the pass band. Hence, this filter response is called a band reject or a band stop filter. Next, okay, I'm going to show it to you. This is all the idea. Okay, so this is called non-idea. As you can see that it takes some time okay, for the filter to respond from pass band to stop band. Okay, you can see from here, there is some time. Okay, but over here is ideal because it takes almost instantly to fall from pass band to stop band. Hence, this form of filter, we call it idea. So you can see from here, this is a low pass filter. Say again, you, you can imagine that all this low frequency can pass, all the high frequency will be stopped. This is called a high pass filter. This is called a band pass filter. And this is called a band stop or band reject filter. So again, the philosophy is there's a one here, okay, which means that they don't change the characteristics they just remove or allow certain band to pass or stop. Hence, 
this is an ideal filter which is going to take a closer look. Next, okay, instead of by showing, okay, I have decided to show you an example. Okay, the diagram below shows the response of four filters. Okay, firstly, state the types of filter for each response. Next, a signal consists of four frequency component, 10 kilohertz, 20 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, and 40 kilohertz is fed into the filter. Okay, state the frequency component that will appear at the filter output. Okay, let's do the first, second, third, and fourth example here. Okay, so this is the original signal that will be fed into the filter. So they have 10, 20, 30, 40 kilohertz of component that will be fed into the low pass filter. Okay, so this is the filter response of a low pass filter. You can see that the cutoff frequency happened at 25 kilohertz. So what happened here is basically you can put these two diagram together into one. Okay, from here you can see that these two end, 10 and 20 will be the component that will be allowed to pass, while component 30 and 40 will be removed. Okay, you can see that this is having a magnitude of one. They are not going to change the characteristics of the component. And this is having a magnitude of zero, okay, which means that we actually remove away this. So in simple word, you can take this value, multiply by one, take this value, multiply by one. When we actually multiply by one, we don't change the characteristic. While these two components, we multiply by zero, okay, which means that nothing appeared at the frequency of 30 and 40 kilohertz. Hence, at the output, okay, we can only see two components, which is at 10 kilohertz and 20 kilohertz. So this is first example on low pass filter. Again, from this example, you can see that the low frequency actually can pass, the higher frequency actually will be stopped. Hence, this form of filter response, we call it a low pass filter. Next, a high pass filter, same example, we have four frequency component at 10, 20, 30, 40 kilohertz. We fit into this high pass filter response here. So now we have a cutoff frequency at 15 kilohertz. Again, we can put this two wave into one diagram here. So from this diagram here, you can see that this 10 kilohertz component will be removed. We actually have three components from 20 kilohertz, 30 kilohertz, and 40 kilohertz. So the outcome after passing through the high pass filter, we actually result to have three components. The low frequency component has been removed and the higher frequency component will be able to pass through the high pass filter. Next, okay, we talk about band pass filter. Again, with the same four component, okay, at 10, 20, 30, 40 kilohertz, okay, we fit into a band pass filter. So the band pass filter has a cutoff frequency at 15 and 25 kilohertz. Again, we put these two diagrams into one. Okay, so therefore from here, you can see that the frequency component at 20 kilohertz is actually able to pass through the band pass filter. Hence, at the output of the band pass filter, we only have one component, which is at 20 kilohertz. Last but not least, let's move on to band reject filter or band stop filter. Same input response with four components fed into a band reject filter or a band stop filter with a cutoff frequency at 15 and 25 kilohertz. Hence again, we put these two diagram into one. Okay, you can see from here, okay, right in the middle, the 20 kilohertz will be removed while 10, 30 and 40 kilohertz will be able to pass through the filter. Hence, this will be the resulting component at the output of the band reject filter or band stop filter. Okay, with this, I like to stop my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Thank you so much.